Once upon a time, there was a little boy whose name was Jack. He lived with his mother in a lovely little house near a lovely little town where there was a lovely little church. Every week, Jack attended Sabbath school in that lovely little church, and every week his mother gave him a bright, shiny quarter for his mission offering. And every week he heard stories about the missionaries in China and India and Africa. And Jack was very happy because his quarter went to help those missionaries every week. One day, as Jack started off to Sabbath school with a nice, bright, shiny quarter in his pocket, Satan caught up with him and whispered in his ear, Why don't you keep that nice, bright, shiny quarter just for once? Nobody would ever know. The missionaries would never miss one little quarter. And look what you could buy for yourself for a quarter. Enough gum to chew all week long, or five candy bars, or five ice cream cones. Hey, why don't you? Why don't you keep the quarter just for once? And Jack listened to Satan, and he said to himself, I believe I will, just for once. And when the offering was taken up, Jack put his empty hand over the envelope and left his bright, shiny quarter down deep in his pocket. But all the time Miss Armstrong was teaching the lesson, Jack was thinking about that quarter. It seemed to be getting hot in the room. His face was burning. Was the quarter still there? He put his hand in his pocket to feel. It was still there, and it was a little bit hot, too. All during church service he was thinking about that quarter, that quarter, and what he would buy with it. He felt again and again it was hot. His ears were burning, too. He wasn't feeling very well. He began to wish. At last they were singing the closing hymn. Jack hurried out of church and hurried home as fast as he could go. Where can I put my quarter, he thought to himself. If I keep it in my pocket, it may fall out, or Mother might find it. I know. I'll put it under the corner of my rug in my room. When Mother came home, she said, Jack, are you well? Your face seems so flushed. I hope you're not getting sick. Oh, no, Mother, I'm not sick. I uh, just ran home. Maybe that's it. Maybe it is, said Mother. But she couldn't help notice how quiet Jack was and that he didn't pass his plate for more pie. That was the longest afternoon that Jack ever lived. He usually liked to go for a walk in the woods nearby, but he was afraid if he went this afternoon, Mother might accidentally find his hidden quarter. So he stayed in his room most of the time and thought and thought and thought about spending his quarter in the morning. Usually, Jack liked to stay up late as possible at nights. But this night, he was glad when Mother suggested that he go to bed early, for his face was still flushed and his ears were so red. She said, I hope you're not coming down with the measles or something, Jack. Oh, no, Mother, said Jack. I'm sure that everything will be all right in the morning. Jack undressed, got into his pajamas, peeked under the rug to see if his quarter was still there, said his prayers, and jumped into bed. Whew, said Jack as he pulled up the covers. It was hard work to say my prayers tonight, especially when I got down to bless the missionaries. I almost wish, I almost wish I hadn't kept that quarter. I wonder if anybody knows. Jack shut his eyes tight and lay there a long time, but he couldn't go to sleep. He turned on his right side, and then on his left, but he couldn't go to sleep. He could still feel the spot where that hot quarter had been in his pocket. He used to love thinking about the missionaries and praying for them, but now, whew, if only I could go to sleep, he sighed. After a long, long time, he did go to sleep. But his quarter and his flushed face and his red ears and the missionaries went round and round in his head till he began to dream.
he was sitting on the rope. The rope where he had hidden his quarter. It seemed to be floating, flying through space. Up over the hills and over the ocean he flew. And all of a sudden, he was in China. There was one of the missionaries handing out a bowl of rice to each person in a long row of starving, hungry people, suffering because of famine. Just as Jack arrived, he saw a thin little ragged Chinese boy lift his bowl for some rice. And he heard the missionary say, I'm sorry, but there's no more rice. You see, Jack kept his quarter today, so you must go without any rice today. And the hungry little boy turned weeping away. Jack shut his eyes. He couldn't bear to look. Oh, how he wished. But the rug was floating again. It was flying through space. Up over the hills and over the ocean he flew. And all of a sudden he was in India at one of the mission hospitals. He saw a little girl knocking at the door, and when the missionary nurse came out, the little girl said, Salam, would you please give me some medicine for my little baby brother? Mother sent me. And the nurse said, I'm sorry, little girl, but I can't give you any medicine today, dear. You see, Jack kept his quarter, so we have no medicine for your little sick brother today. And the little girl turned and walked away with tears streaming down her face. Jack shut his eyes. He couldn't bear to look. Oh, how he wished. But the rug was floating again. It was flying through space, up over the hills, and over the ocean he flew. And all of a sudden he was in Africa. And there was one of the mission schools. It was so pretty, and the boys inside were so clean and happy. But one little boy was lying on the ground, looking longingly through the fence. Why don't you go inside and join those happy little boys in school, said Jack. Because, sobbed the little orphan boy, because Jack kept his quarter, and they haven't enough money to take in any more little boys. Jack wanted to buy gum and candy and ice cream cones. And Jack felt so sorry he began to cry. And as he sobbed, he woke himself right up. Oh, he said, what an awful dream I've had. He sat up in bed, rubbed his eyes, then jumped out of bed to see if his quarter was still under the rug. Oh, goody, there it was. He hadn't spent it yet. Maybe there would still be time to get it into the offering. He could hardly wait till morning. And by the time Mother was up, he was dressed and came bounding down the stairs. Are you feeling better this morning, said Mother in surprise. Uh, yes, Mother, I'm feeling much better. I'll be back soon. I'm just going over to see Miss Armstrong for a few moments. Up the street he ran and didn't stop till he knocked on the door of Miss Armstrong's house. Oh, Miss Armstrong, he said as she opened the door. Miss Armstrong, could I put this quarter in with yesterday's mission offering? Satan tempted me to keep it for myself, but I had such an awful dream. He told her about the hungry little Chinese boy, the little Indian baby, and the African orphan boy, all starving, sick, and homeless. And he added, Oh, I'll never, never, never be tempted to keep back my mission offering anymore. Yes, of course we can get that quarter in with yesterday's mission offering, said Miss Armstrong. Come, I'll go with you to the church treasurer's place. It's just around the corner. And as Jack ran home that morning, his face wasn't red anymore. And his ears were not red anymore. And he told his mother all about it. And mother put her arms around him and held him tight as she said, I'm so glad. And when they had worshipped that morning and prayed for the missionaries in China, in India, and in Africa, how easy it was to pray. <laughs>